He has no idea I'm here. He's just feeding, eating. Why can't you just help me get Copper over in with the ladies? Hmm? It's supposed to be his day to shine. And, uh, he's not shining, Copper. You're not shining, bro. Special delivery. Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by Helix Sleep. Helix makes customized mattresses to fit your needs shipped to your door. Or in my case, my front gate. DJ and I have been sleeping on our Helix mattress for probably well over a year now. And we did their sleep quiz, which you go online, type in all of your information, whether you're a back sleeper, side sleeper, belly sleeper. Who sleeps on their belly? That's weird. Uh, anyways, ours was the Helix Midnight Lux. And we've talked about this thing for a while and we love it. It's great. Helix mattresses are great. Now it's time to uh, start adding a few more to the mix. We got one. This one's actually for Houston. We're going to put this up in Houston's room today. Helix Lux Dusk, I believe, is the model of this mattress. So. Also, this year, Helix launched their newest, most high-end collection yet, the Helix Elite. They put their years of extensive mattress expertise to use to create a truly elevated sleep experience. The Helix Elite Collection includes six different mattress models to combine high-end luxury with a personalized comfort tailored to your preference. Excuse me, buddy. I gotta open these pillows. So unlike many other mattress brands, Helix mattresses contain no fiberglass, which can really be harmful to your health. Other mattress companies use fiberglass as a flame retardant in their products, but Helix mattresses are free of harmful fiberglass materials. In fact, Helix owns its manufacturing facility, which is entirely free from products containing fiberglass. And the best part about it is Helix delivers the mattress to your door or your front gate with free shipping. Okay, you're going to get a 100 night, a 100 night sleep trial. Plus, Helix mattresses have a 10 year warranty and they offer flexible payment plans. So a great night's sleep is never far away. Earl, you know what a little birdie told me? That little birdie told me that our fans, our followers, need to keep an eye on the Helix website because they're gonna be doing some flash sales all through the month of October. And the only way to find it is to be on the website. I love my Helix mattress and I think you would too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix Sleep. You can click the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash arms family to get 20% off your Helix mattress plus two free pillows. Huh, Earl. Well, what's up guys? It's Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and I'm at the creek right now, but this was not supposed to be a creek video. I was driving out. I was literally just driving through. I'm headed to Mill Creek to go spray foam the ceiling in our deer blind. I ordered a DIY kit online. It finally came in. It's supposed to have been here two weeks ago. Anyways, more on that later. As I'm crossing the creek, I saw what I thought was a beaver going through the water. Well, check this out. See that? <clears throat> he has no idea I'm here. He's just feeding, eating crawdads and little things. He's not, not eating big fish right now, but they will.
pretty wild. He came out of the creek, went up on the bank, and he laid there in the sun for a few minutes. And it's like he's scrounging around foraging on the bank now. He had all kinds of, I don't know what all they eat. I know they eat a lot of fish out of the creek. You know, they eat the crawfish and little mussels and snails and things. But he's up on the bank foraging now, so I don't know. Probably eating small bugs, insects, whatever he can find, I guess. Well, these guys eat a lot of fish. There were two or three bass that were sitting right there a second ago, but uh, they'll definitely be on the menu soon. They won't last long with, uh, with otters in the creek again. There's a couple laying right here. There's a couple fish right there. I knew the fishing in the creek had gone down dramatically, but uh, I didn't realize we had otters here again. Well, he disappeared off into the end of the brush. I don't know how far up they go up on land to feed or, or do whatever. He may have a den, he, she, I don't know. I know they're cute and cuddly looking and all neat and furry and everybody loves to watch otters at the zoo. Oh, golly. Ooh. We have got, we call these goat heads. There's a bunch of different names for them. Uh, the world's worst weed weed grass oh they will eat you alive it doesn't look like much sharp 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 and there are thousands of them over there anyways uh otters are all cute and cuddly and everybody loves to watch otters play at the zoo they are detrimental to the fish population and uh i just happened to be driving out headed to go over to the mill creek property to work And so I'm just, I just caught a glimpse of it headed through the creek. And uh, now that I'm here, I see a lot of evidence of it. He's been here a while. So just for reference, we're just behind the dam where the kids rope swing, rope swing tree was, but the limb broke. But you see this little area right here? You can definitely tell they've been up on the bank playing around, but the biggest telltale sign that the otters are back. We've had otter problems in the past and uh, hadn't seen them in probably, I don't know, a year and a half. But look at this. They love to uh, lay out on this, on this dam, I'm assuming just, you know, to lay out in the sun and stuff, but I'm sure most of this is done at night, but I don't know. But look at all of the scales. This is all otter poop. And uh, a lot of times you'll see raccoon poop up here, but this is full of fish scales and fish bones. I know it's kind of gross. Let me grab a stick. Lots of fish scales and uh, lots and lots of crawfish parts. See all the red? All that red is crawfish shells, legs and pieces and things. And uh, man, we're gonna have to have to put up a trail camera probably and see if we can start getting some pictures of when they're coming through. I know a lot of you aren't gonna be happy if we start trapping otters out of the creek, but the last thing I want is for them to uh, find our pond. So from what I've been told, otters can eat anywhere from three to five pounds of fish per day. Now, as long as they're in the creek and this time of year, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of one of those iffy situations. The problem is, is they travel the creek a lot and there's only so much food in the creek. And our pond that we spend a lot of time stocking and managing and, you know, trying to grow big bass and big bluegill is not far from the creek. And the overflow is basically a, a wet weather creek, a ditch that flows into this creek. So it'd be very easy for otters to find the pond. and. Uh, I'm gonna have to start going over there and looking for evidence, sign, like what we found on the dam there, to see if the otters make it to 
the pond because if they do i'll have to take them out they'll have to be eliminated period they will get trapped and or you know just flat out blasted well that's enough excitement for one day right i uh was totally not expecting to come across an otter in the creek today there's just one but uh like anything else where there's one there's more and oh we got to get up out of the creek I'm driving my wife's truck because mine is uh mine's at the shop i'm having some airbags installed in my my three-quarter ton because every time i hook onto a trailer it looks like i'm driving a squatted truck chevrolet needs to do a better job some heavier suspension in their three-quarter ton work trucks because i can put an empty trailer on there and i can tell it's squatted but anyways otters not good not a good situation don't want them around don't want them in the creek they are cool to see don't get me wrong i know it's one of those touchy subjects with otters it's you know when it comes to like beavers people don't have a problem with you removing beavers from your property because they're detrimental to the trees and they you know can cause a lot of water issues even though they are cool to watch too otters we didn't used to have otters around here and in the last uh seven eight ten years they've become more and more common they're spreading and uh man almost wish they weren't here Well, made it over to Mill Creek and the, or shed the blind conversion. So the walls are already painted. I came over, I don't know, last week and painted because the spray foam kit that I ordered was being delayed and had no idea when I was going to get it. So I painted all the walls black so that when you're inside, it just makes it darker and, you know, animals outside can't uh, see movement in here as much. So we're probably going to get some spray foam on the walls because I didn't bring any kind of drop cloth or anything, but it's not that big a deal. So I've never used a DIY spray foam kit, so we're going to try it. And I just ordered this on Amazon. It was supposed to be here, you know, within three or four days, and it took like two weeks. I'm not sure what the deal is. So never done it before, but it is, you know, just a DIY spray foam insulation um comes with a gun comes with everything you need i mean it even has safety equipment so safety glasses and everything now one thing i don't see in here that i thought it came with was a mask it's probably highly recommended to use a face covering when you're spraying this stuff especially overhead and i don't have a respirator I thought it came with a mask. Comes with uh, <laughs> it comes with six pair of gloves, which I brought my own gloves, but no mask. So uh, don't get on me for not having a respirator. I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna open up all the windows and doors, and, and I'm not doing a ton. It's just the ceiling in here. I'm not doing all the walls and everything. I think we'll be all right. So I'll leave a link in the description box if I remember to this Amazon kit that I bought. And like I said, it's, you know, I could put bat insulation in the ceiling in there, but I kind of figured, I don't know, spray foam would be easier and uh, more permanent. I don't know, unless you wanted to frame up and put, uh, put a ceiling in the blind, but I don't really want to put a full ceiling in there. So it comes with a can of cleaner so that you can clean your gun when you're done because i probably won't need all 12 cans of this spray foam today it's just like the spray foam you know crack filler spray foam the can it just screws on your gun and uh it's supposed to come out like spray foam just like we did in our big shop well all we can do is try Got it all rigged up, and uh, it comes with a couple different tips, but I can't find any instructions other than the warning label on the can. There's not like an instruction sheet that actually tells you which tip to use. One's for 
spraying up and one's for spraying, you know, straight out. I think I picked the right one, but we shall see. So wish me luck. It's kind of tight quarters in here. So I'll do my best I can to show you what I can on video. simple I mean seems to be the right tip I don't know how much to spray so it's a learning curve here Well, there's one can down probably got more than a third of the ceiling covered <laughs> it's not perfect but it is working all right let's go for can number two see you can see daylight through there so i'm trying to fill all those cracks just to make it a little more airtight keep the pest and the wasp and the spiders and bugs out And number two. All right, four cans of spray foam is what I went through to do the ceiling in there. And they send you a can of foam cleaner to clean your gun because the gun's reusable. So as long as I've got cleaner, you know, clean the gun out, get all the foam out of the gun, we can reuse it over and over. So probably shouldn't point it at the camera, right? be all it takes and while it's just us here i do have uh, one request you do not tell dj i accidentally sprayed the back of her truck with spray foam i'll never get to, i'll never get to borrow the truck again uh I, so i'm screwing a can on and it slipped and i accidentally pulled the trigger there's no safety the good news is <laughs> the gun cleaner helps me get it up pretty well so spray Scrub. It's uh, it might have gone a few places it shouldn't have gone, but as long as you guys don't tell her, she doesn't watch my videos. We'll all be all right. I won't tell if you guys won't. That's coming up pretty good. I didn't even spray that. She'll never know. She'll never know. I might need a little spray. See, really all I have to do when I get home is say, honey, the back of your truck sure is dirty. I'm going to wash it out for you real quick because it needs washed. I don't want to spray that on the paint too much. 
That might not be good. It's all coming off pretty good. Who's gonna know? Well, it's not perfect, but for what it is, it's a really good, quick, easy option. I don't have to hang bat insulation up there, big fiberglass bats, and then put plywood or something to hold it up. Did the whole thing in probably 20 minutes, and most of it, I would say, has decent coverage of one to two inches of spray foam. There's a couple places, like, I can see I missed a spot right there, but let's not forget, this is just a deer blind. The walls are not even insulated right now, and I don't plan on insulating them, uh, especially not for this deer season. We don't get that extremely cold. The main reason for the spray foam up there is because that is just a tin roof, that just silver tin sheet metal, and it gets extremely hot and turns this little ground blind, this little shed, into a solar oven. So, I'm ready. Oh, my chair makes a weird noise. I don't have to address that problem, but we're ready for deer season in this ground line. But the chair's not. Well, I made it home. I stopped down at the creek for a little while and checked everything out and did not see our otter friend anymore, but I really kind of had low expectations of seeing him so I need to do the chores but I am going to see if I can get copper moved over into the goat pen with the girls we're gonna let copper do all the breeding Isaac's kind of our uh, retired fellow here he, <laughs> I feel bad because these does have been coming in for quite a while now and typically I'll breed earlier in the season than this so that we have like New Year's babies like early January the last couple of years, January, February has been pretty harsh and obviously there's no green grass, anything on the ground, but it's nice to have those babies up and ready to sell by the time, you know, 50 pounds by like April, May is great. And uh, that's when the prices are up really. But, but this year I'm gonna breed a little bit later. I don't know if I can get, DJ and Houston are out here giving treats to the animals and playing. So may need a little assistance from them. But we're going to get Copper separated and move him over with the girls and let him do billy goat things. I just didn't expect when I came down here for Isaac to be up on his feet and standing right next to the gate. Because typically he's laying back there in that big spotted doe right there that Houston's always called Spot. She, uh, she torments these two fellas. Hey, Copper. Come here. Come here, Copper. Isaac usually won't come to me like Copper does, but uh, for an old man, Isaac still got one thing on his brain, don't you, buddy? It's only fair that I like, you know, you'd think maybe put like one or two girls in with you. I mean, it'd be nice, but probably going to let Copper do the job this year, buddy. Okay? You got anything to say? Huh? Speak to me. Speak now or forever. Hold your peace, Isaac. <laughs> Copper. Copper, come here. Hey, you go that way. Go that way. Come on, Copper. Oh, you want to go? You want to go? Come on. Oh, oh, I don't want to touch you because you stink so bad, buddy. I got a good surprise for you if you'll just trust me. Come on, man. You got to trust me, okay? Go out the gate. Gate's open. Just for you, buddy. Just for you. Come on. Copper, come here. Oh, here comes Charlie. He'll come out the gate. Look at that. I saw what you did, Copper. You just straight up block, Charlie. Come here, Copper. Hey, Bear. Watch out, buddy. Get back. Get back, girls. Hey. Hey, Mom, get in there. Go. That way. That way. 
Copper, I got a surprise for you, buddy. Get back, girls. Get back. Bro, Copper, look. Over there, there's a gate where you go through and get with your girlfriend. <laughs> oh. I'll have to get a scoop of feed. He'll follow me. Come on, Come on. Come on, Copper. Get over here. It's a big day. Don't be scared. Don't act like Houston. Listen, it ain't time to fight. Here. It's your big day, bro. It's your big day, let's go. Come on, Copper. I may not get him to move. Keep backing up. Go out that gate. It's right there. It's open. Go make your escape. I want to turn you in with your girlfriends. Can I do that? Hmm? Go being goofy. Come on. Breeding season makes you weird. You know that? Any other time you'd follow me like a puppy dog. But you and Isaac have got bro things going on right now, huh? Come on. Come on, Copper. Come on, Copper. Turn your head. There it is. There's freedom. Well, not freedom the donkey, but... You're freedom. Really? Really? You just want to play, don't you? That's all you're interested in. What's up, Charlie? You want to play with my ring? Hey, easy now. You're going to break that, and I'm going to get in trouble. You know what? He likes that rubber. That rubber ring. <laughs> what? What? Why can't you just help me get copper over in with the ladies? Hmm? It's supposed to be his day to shine, and uh, he's not shining, Copper. You're not shining, bro. You're being hard-headed. You're acting like a billy goat. Huh. Tell him, quit acting like a billy goat. There's no doubt. Goats have to be the most hard-headed, stubborn animal you could ever own. No doubt. And they're smart. Don't give them, I mean, don't shortchange a goat. They know when something's up. And, uh, you know, typically when I come down here, Copper's just hanging out up there by the gate, wanting to get in with the girls. But I didn't think about it ahead of time, but Houston and DJ were in here feeding treats and playing with the animals and kind of nothing against them. They didn't do a dang thing wrong, but they kind of had everyone stirred up. And, you know, all animals are like, what's going on? What's going on? It's, you know different than normal not different than normal but you know they weren't just in here relaxing by themselves so then i come in the picture and I'm like copper come on he says no nah, i'm on to your magic buddy i'm not doing that why aren't you copper why couldn't you be as easy to move as charlie huh what's up charlie hmm speaking of charlie the charlie shirts the, the all the new merch the fall merch launch dj has shipped out hundreds like hundreds and hundreds i don't i really don't know honestly several hundred orders that she's packaged and shipped but if you missed the fall launch there's still a lot of stuff left and uh, i know some sizes are sold out in some of the shirts probably not going to reorder anything right now because we're trying to make that transition to the other merch building soon uh but armsfamilyhomestead.com charlie gets excited over his shirt don't you buddy hmm well i just decided to go ahead and feed to let everybody settle down and uh well let copper settle down i got uh, i got a few pepper she likes her her diet moisten her special food hush goose pepper come here i got your feed uh, 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 
You better hurry. The geese are going to eat it all. I got it nice and nice and moist for you. Got your feet all soaking in some water because that's the way you like it. Old Princess Pepper. And you, the weirdo, after my ring again. Huh. There's n nothing rhymes with Charlie. You, you can't be Prince Charlie. Prince Charles? Yeah, I guess there is a Prince Charles, huh? So I think the best thing I can do as far as Isaac's concerned is just go in the house, have supper, come back out later and see if, I'm sorry, Copper, not Isaac. The best thing I can do for as far as Copper's concerned is just go in and have supper, let them chill out for a while. So I really don't want to just catch Copper and drag him over there with the ladies. Shouldn't have to drag a man to, to his ladies. Shouldn't have to do that. But uh, he'll be up there by the gate in a little while. And we'll see if we can get him moved in. And speaking of dinner, look at here. Got some boneless chicken thighs that I cut up, wrapped in bacon, cooked to perfection, almost done. Oh man, listen to that sizzle. you he's up there by the gate there's isaac laying out here where he normally does but i bet you copper is up there by the gate <laughs> you want to race i think you'll win buddy i think you'll win There's Copper, he's hanging out at the hay bale with his buddy. Fed the donkeys a little bit late this evening because uh, they've eaten up all of their hay, just about. So I went ahead and fed kind of late so that I could get in here with a bale of hay and not have to fight them coming in the gate. Excuse me, sir. How was that hay bale? I saw you up there munching on some hay. You reckon I could interest you in uh, a date with some lovely ladies? Hmm? If not, we'll catch you on the next time. Maybe tomorrow? You don't want to go out the gate? Being stubborn? Huh? Not interested in a girlfriend right now? Hey, buddy. Hmm. Come on. Well, as of right now, Copper is uh, not interested. And I'm not going to push him. I'm not going to force him. But if we can get Copper moved over pretty quick, relatively quick, that'll give us early to mid-March baby goats. And we should start greening up April. So, perfect time. Um, I'm not in a rush, honestly. We'll get him moved over eventually. But uh, that bale of hay I put out for the donkeys, I know is not the greatest hay. I think I'm down to, after that one, one more bale of last year's hay. And they'll pick through that and pick and choose what they want. So don't stress about the quality of that hay because we're still feeding them. They do have a little a little green grass in their pasture. And uh, it's really just roughage. It's kind of filler right now. So they'll do just fine on that. And then we'll switch to this year's fresh hay real soon. So anyways, guys, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video. Well, well, well. Look who decided to come out the gate. We're halfway there. Halfway there.
Copper, I got a surprise for you. I don't know how I'm gonna keep RJ in. RJ, you get back. Go, 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 go. Copper, come here, buddy. Come here. <laughs> Why'd you walk behind that panel? Copper, don't go that way. Really, bro? That's where you decide to go? Come back out. He's fine, folks. Can't even see you. It's so dark out here, buddy. You stay in. You stay in. You stay in here. Go. Quit kicking. You're not going to kick anybody. Go. Oh, look at there. Guess who's on the other side of the fence? Copper. Well, it's not the way I expected this to go down tonight or today, but Copper is in with his ladies and I guess maybe he'll do his best work in the dark. And I didn't bring anything more than a phone no light except what's on my phone so all right then copper do your thing man make us some pretty babies mm -hmm.